Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 4 talking about Test Analysis and Design and continuing ahead with our same segment that is 4.5 Collaborative Based Test Approaches. And today we shall be talking about a little deep dive on what is acceptance criteria. So acceptance criteria are basically the continuation to that of our previous discussion, which we had about collaborative user story writing skills. And at the same time, uh, when we write the user stories, we do make sure that every single story has clear, achievable, acceptable acceptance criteria. So generally, it is supposed to be a collaborative writing skill as well. That is to determine that what acceptance criteria must I have. From the previous discussion, we already know what is the definition, but still, if you're watching this for the first time, acceptance criteria are basically those conditions when we, which when are met, the user story is considered as done. So for any particular functional requirement, we put it into a story format in a template like, as a user, I want to be able to do this so that this can happen, which includes the user persona, the element which you want to implement and of course what should be the expected outcome of it but as it could be sometime very very wide with their scope of work we try to trim that down to the point with using acceptance criteria so it's also said that as far as the team development team has met all the acceptance criteria then it's just that the story is complete you don't really have to do anything beyond that so as far as you have met the acceptance criteria the story can be considered as done so let's exactly see what this item, this particular segment of our chapter is trying to talk about when it comes to acceptance criteria, and let's see it in more detail. So acceptance criteria for a user story are basically the conditions that an implementation of the user story must meet to be accepted by the stakeholder. From this perspective, acceptance criteria may be viewed as the test conditions that should be exercised by the test as well. So indeed, uh, as given that acceptance criteria are those remarkable conditions by which the business will accept your story in form of what they wanted it, same way, the acceptance criteria could be a great set of test conditions for us that as far as we have tested the given acceptance criteria, we have done what we were supposed to do or we have tested what we are supposed to test related to that particular functionality. So yes, it is just not limited to the implementation that is only for developers. Acceptance criteria are equally important for the test engineers as well. And it is very important for a test engineer to review the acceptance criteria before we can accept the story into the sprint. Also to add further here, uh, acceptance criteria are usually a result of conversation. So every single conversation which takes place on top of a card, we derive the set of acceptance criteria, which we might be looking forward to achieve as a part of the implementation and testing. Now, of course, acceptance criteria are used to basically define the scope of user story, reach consensus among the stakeholders that can we do that, can we achieve this, can, is it possible to do, and so on. Describe both positive and negative scenarios, serve as a basis for the user story acceptance testing. So this would, in turn, will help the business users to also conduct acceptance testing on the same. And last, of course, allow accurate planning and estimation. Given that we have the very precise to the point acceptance criteria, we know exactly how much time will it take to achieve those uh, acceptance criteria. So I think acceptance criteria's significance is being taught to you right here that why it is important to write an acceptance criteria for every single story. And at the same time, all we are trying to convey you that it is equally important for you to understand how it should be reviewed. Because if you know the significance, you know what is the importance of reviewing an acceptance criteria before picking up a story. So let's talk further on this. So there are several ways to write acceptance criteria for a user story. The most common formats are one scenario oriented, which is like given when then format, which is used quite often in BDD. And second, which is rule oriented, like you can use bullet point verification list or tabulated form of input output mapping. I think again, given that you might have been practicing about agile methodologies yourself, you pretty much know that some of the organizations prefer writing one, two, three, or bulleted list of all the acceptance criteria very precisely, or sometime uh, the organization do follow the Gherkin language. Yes, given, when, then, 
is more of like given some precondition when a user does this then this is what should happen okay so we can even use the language called as gherkin which uses given when then format to write the acceptance criteria so in the uh, any of these approaches can be used in the organization to define the acceptance criteria for the stories also to add here uh, most acceptance criteria can be documented in one of these two formats however the team may use another that is custom format as long as the acceptance criteria are well defined and unambiguous right so point being made is it's not that every single organization every single team has to just stick to these two formats only if possible they think there's any other way which is making their team understand better about it then they can always go ahead and write it see anyways we have covered all three formats given when then the bulleted list or the tabulated form but if you think writing paragraphs would make your team understand better, then please, you're free to do so. There are no restrictions than how you should write your acceptance criteria. But these are those common methods which globally accepted in terms of writing acceptance criteria. Also to add beyond the syllabus here, as we're talking about acceptance criteria, as a tester, you must be very curious that when the acceptance criteria are being written, you must check for its achievability or its testability for example i would like to give you some real-time examples of how the acceptance criteria can be vague in terms of non-achievable so if i have written an acceptance criteria like the this particular feature like login should work on all major browsers people may think yeah that makes sense that's fine we can do it but what do you mean by major right a major browser does not exist so when your acceptance criteria says that the login feature must work on all major browsers, I reject this acceptance criteria being a test engineer. I should always let the PO and the stakeholders know that. What do you mean by major? Because for you, it could be Google Chrome. For me, it can be Safari. And that is a contradicting or vague statement to be achieved, right? So always get that clear picture, very precise information from the product owner or with the discussion with the team that, this is unachievable, okay? Same way if I'm talking about performance testing, a very vague statement in the acceptance criteria would look like the performance of the system should be the best. Now, what do you mean by best? Performance cannot be measured as best. Performance has things or parameters related to the resources, the response time, the number of users, and the scenario details, right? So point being made here is that a tester should always be curious in reviewing the acceptance criteria as well, not just the story details, and to make sure that these acceptance criteria are understood by the test engineer, and at the same time, it should be achievable, testable, and completable. Okay, if in case not, then they should raise their hand stating that, hey, I don't think uh, a testing team can do this, right? So we need a better clarity on this. Anyways, put together, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.